Okay, so I really don't want to fuck this presentation up. The likelihood is that I will. The irony to it all is that I want to talk to you about failure. Now, I'm really passionate about it. I'm fascinated by it. It's a little sadistic because I like talking about it and I like hearing about other people's failures. Why? Because everybody's been associated with the F word at some point in their life. It's like that dirty little word that mum knows you know, you don't want to say it. Why? Because we all want to succeed and nobody wants to fail. Now, <laughs> I know it's not a popular topic. There seems to be a little bit of uh, shame and stigma about it. But why don't we use the F word more often? Why aren't there more positive associations? Why aren't they on our CVs? Why aren't they on our report cards? And why aren't they in annual reports? I wanted to investigate this further, so I decided to put myself into the hazardous occupational uh, occupations of drug distribution. I wanted to be a doctor, but the people at RPA thought it was a little bit dangerous and unethical to let me be in charge of people's lives. Trial and error about medicine? I don't know. Anyway, so you're probably wondering why. And this is because dealers are ultimately set up to fail. It's inevitable. The clock's ticking and the consequences suck. So, <laughs> the first point here in actually getting to fail is you've got to get over about three hurdles, and that is to actually take action. You've got to get off your ass. You've actually got to want to give it a go. So my first point of call was to infiltrate a network, get some product, and get some clientele. <laughs> this then brought me to my second hurdle, the fear of consequence, the preemptive thought of failing, A, which was don't get arrested, and B, don't get shot by your competition. <laughs> Dealers are funny people. Strangely territorial. Uh, so then this comes to strategy and tactics, the hurdle. If you know the difference between these two, you're already winning. In this case, how I dealt with this is I found a new market. I found it by combining ecstasy and Viagra and selling it to the elderly at a nursing home. I called it the hot rod. <laughs> now, why would you be bothered? Couldn't you find another hobby to be shit at, Patrick? Sure, I could. And these were all things that, my, that people would say to me, my friends, they used to shit me. And that is excuses why I shouldn't do something. But, of course, things went horribly wrong and I got arrested. Now, as I was pinned to the wall, I thought to myself, if I don't learn something from this experience, I've missed something really vital. And here it is. It's vital that you learn from your mistakes, people. Doing the same thing over and over again is stupid. I also had another epiphany at this point in questioning was, well... Everybody tells you to remain calm. Eh, fuck that. You've got to panic. <laughs> Pressure is good for you. Man, use it. What's the worst that can happen? At this point, I got, had to be innovative. My incarceration was inevitable, and I decided to be the dealer on the cell block. Now, that's not really that innovative, but my product was. Vaporized Valium that smelt like lavender. Kept everybody calm. I didn't have to worry about being the prison bitch. But it then <laughs> brought me to the next point, what... Which was, was this a rite of passage? Did we all go through this? Was it important that I failed? And then I went back to my, next, my second hurdle, which was fear of consequence. Thankfully, I got out. Needless to say, I do think that this whole process is, uh, you know, a valuable, a valuable experience. Uh, it's definitely a rite of passage. And it makes us evolved, more invaluable, uh, better than we were before. But it's important to work to a few golden rules. Now, I think we have a tendency to judge a situation uh, quite quickly, but w instead of just noting it, but, you know, that's just our own preconceptions. And so we've got to kind of get past that. Now, the first one is really important, and that's about control. In this case, where I went wrong was I delved into my own stash. Now, this is not good for business, and it's not good for my own health. But I planned for this, and this is where it takes me on to my second point, which was have a plan and stick to it. Have a contingency plan and have a backup plan of the contingency plan because you never know when shit's going to go wrong. This then brings me to my next point, which is all about, eh, come on, time, adaption and the ability to adapt. Uh, it makes you versatile enough to deal with the world's changes because, well, let's put it this way, when the world zigs, you need to zag. But... That means you need to take risks. Now, you've got to remember that there is no innovation without failure. So you have to take a risk. That means only those of you who risk will be free. 
that means if you're not risking anything, you're actually not doing your job and we're not evolving, which is why I believe we need to make more mistakes. We need to fuck stuff up more. We need to talk about it, embrace it with our friends. That's why I think failure should actually be a new measure of success. Thank you. Thank you very much, Patrick Meehan.